I've heard English say that fishing is being ruined, that technology, charters, tournaments, and simply fishing pressure is having a negative impact on the sport of fishing. I mean, what if we went to go fishing one day and there was no fish to be caught? What if our fish populations were gone? One might say that this is the greatest fear fishermen could have, but what does the science say? This one study may completely change the way you think about fishing and the impact we are having on our fisheries. Since I started competitively bass fishing nearly 20 years ago, I've heard the same sentiment time and time again. You're killing our lakes. And when you look into studies that have been done on tournament bass mortality, you'd be shocked to find that it's been documented that delayed mortality can be as high as 68%. Now, while this was an extreme outlier, many other studies have shown that 25 to 30% of tournament retained bass die shortly after being released. Now, this obviously makes a lot of recreational anglers mad at tournament anglers, but you also go to the lake and occasionally see recreational anglers intentionally harvesting bass for the dinner table, in which case 100% die. And if you are simply a catch, weigh, and release angler, you are not off the hook. Another study conducted in Texas specifically on catch and release bass showed that 22% of bass caught and release died within 72 hours due to a number of factors like being hooked deeply or mishandling of the fish. But at the end of the day, no matter what side of the fence you think you're on, nobody wants to see our fisheries go to trash. So as anglers, we should be asking the question, are we actually killing our lakes? That's the question I was asking myself. So a few weeks ago, I decided to do a deep dive. I started scouring the internet databases for scientific papers. I talked to different fishermen biologists to hear their input and I found four different studies that were done in Minnesota, Connecticut, and two in Texas that spoke about the impact anglers had on a bass population. So in this video I'm not going to jump to conclusions, I'm not going to throw false opinions and narratives out there just for views, I'm going to look at the scientific literature to see what kind of impact fishermen are having on bass populations and if they are actually killing our lakes. Study number one was conducted on Lake Minnetonka in Minnesota. Long story short, the researchers found that only about 1-3% to of the total bass mortality in Lake Minnetonka over the course of a year was due to tournament anglers. Unfortunately, this study did not say much about the total impact recreational anglers had on the lake, and even said to use caution when extrapolating this data out to other bodies of water. So, I moved on to study number two. Study number two was a two-year study conducted on Mansfield Hollow Reservoir in Gardner Lake in Connecticut. Now, this study definitely had a little bit more information, but again, it really only focused on tournament anglers and I really wanted to know the impact that all anglers had on a fishery. This study showed that tournament anglers killed roughly 1 to 3.2% of the entire bass population every single year, which according to them was not statistically significant. Now, as I continue to read through these scientific articles, I also realized that both of these studies were done in the northern part of the country, Minnesota and Connecticut. And although there are definitely bass fishermen up there, they're not nearly as prevalent as they are in the south and that's when i found study number three which was an absolute gold mine of information on how anglers are impacting the future of fishing if you would like to help support this channel and help me bring more videos like this to you, consider buying something from my fishing apparel company, Fin Fishing. Right now, I am selling my bass hat for 15% off. This is a unique hat made with a wooden bass badge made from a bourbon barrel. I will leave a link down below in the description. Thanks for the support. Study number three was conducted on legendary Texas Lake Sam Rayburn Reservoir. This study was one of the biggest ever conducted on the impact 
impact that anglers have on a reservoir. Sam Rayburn is not only known for kicking out giant bass and incredible stringers for Texas anglers, but anglers around the nation come to fish this specific reservoir every single year. It's been estimated that the annual total economic value of Sam Rayburn Reservoir Fishery is over $46 million, of which 66% is due to tournament angling. Now, with that being said, Sam Rayburn, like many lakes across the U.S., receives a ton of fishing pressure and the total number of tournaments held on this lake ranges between three and 400 every single year. So surely this study will show the true impact that anglers have on a fishery. Now with the extreme amount of fishing pressure put on this lake by both tournament anglers and recreational anglers, Texas Parks and Wildlife Biologist Todd Driscoll wanted to see if the fishing pressure was having a negative impact on the lake. So the main objective of this study was to not only see the tournament impact on the bass population, but also the recreational impact on the bass population so that Texas Parks and Wildlife could plan accordingly. Now, one of the biggest problems with conducting a study like this is getting an accurate result. Sam Rayburn is a giant reservoir, over 114,000 surface acres. And in order to get an accurate picture of the lake, the biologists were going to have to tag a lot of bass. So the researchers went to work. They electroshocked 6,021 bass from over 363 different capture sites across the lake. The fish ranged in size from small legal length keepers to fish that were over 25 inches and eight pounds in weight. All of these fish were tagged, recorded, and released within 400 meters of where they were originally caught. Tagging this many bass would give the researchers statistical power. After the electroshocking and tagging process was done, the next step of the study was to try and figure out the actual population of legal sized bass that were living in the lake. They did this by using historical cove rotenone data. Now, if you don't know what historical rotenone data means, I didn't either, so don't feel bad. But after personally talking to Todd Driscoll, I found out that at times, biologists have used a natural compound called rotenone, which is often found in pesticides and herbicides, to kill fish. Rotenone quickly absorbs into fish gills, which cause them to suffocate. <laughs> Now, this compound has been used as a fish toxicant in the U.S. since the mid-1930s, but is rarely used today. Its main use has been used to kill nuisance species of fish like common carp, and it's been used to estimate the total number of fish in a body of water. This is known as cove rotenone sampling. To do this, they would use a gill net to block off an entire cove, and then they would apply the rotenone to that cove to kill the fish, which makes it easy to get an accurate count of the fish that are in that cove, but on the downside, it kills all the fish. Although this is the best way to get an estimate of the fish population, Todd and his team obviously didn't want to kill off the fish, so they simply used data from these rotenone samples to give them the bass population estimates within a 95% confidence. And in this case, they found out that the population of legal sized bass in Sam Rayburn Reservoir was 400,000 500 bass. Now the next part of this study was to figure out how many bass in the lake were caught and released immediately, how many bass were caught and harvested by non-tournament anglers, how many bass were caught and retained by tournament anglers, and how many bass were killed by tournament anglers. Knowing these numbers would show the true impact that all anglers were having on the fishery. Now, unfortunately for many tagging studies, as biologists, you are relying on anglers to voluntarily call you when they have caught a tagged fish, which obviously not every single angler is going to do. Knowing this, Todd and his team decided that for an entire year that they were not only going to rely on these calls, but they were also going to actively conduct creel surveys themselves, which basically means they spent their time chasing down boats on the water, talking to bank anglers, waiting at boat ramps for anglers to come off the water, and speaking to tournament anglers to see if any of the bass they had caught were tagged. After conducting these creel surveys in 3,447 angler interviews 
use, the biologists were able to take their data and extrapolate it out to get an extremely interesting and accurate number. One of the most interesting numbers that the biologists found was that even though there are three to 400 tournaments a year in nearly 25,000 participants at Sam Rayburn, only 5% of the total bass population was detained by tournament anglers and hauled to a weigh-in site. This is an extremely interesting number to me because you often hear the notion that tournament weigh-ins are moving fish populations around because a large percentage of bass brought back to the weigh-in will stay within a mile of the weigh-in site. Now, the part about bass staying near a weigh-in site is actually true. I looked at a study conducted on Lake Champlain in New York that showed that over two years, 56% of the bass brought to a weigh-in site on Cumberland Bay on Lake Champlain stayed within that bay for the entire two years. However, when looking at the Texas numbers, even if 50% of the bass stayed near the weigh-in site, you're only talking about 2.5% of the entire bass population that has been moved by tournament anglers. Another interesting number they found was that 6% of the bass population was harvested by non tournament anglers, which means that the bass were primarily brought home for the dinner table. But hey, you're allowed to keep five bass a day, so why not? Now, probably the most interesting number found in this study was that only 27% of the Sam Rayburn bass population were caught and released immediately by both recreational anglers and tournament anglers, which means that over the course of an entire year, if you add in the 5% of bass that were retained in those tournaments, the 6% harvested by non-tournament anglers, and the 27% that were caught and released this means that of the entire bass population, only 38% of them were caught over the course of a year. This is a little over one third of the bass. To me, the reason that this is so interesting is not that one third of the bass were caught. It's because that of all the angling pressure that Sam Rayburn sees on a yearly basis, about two thirds of the legal size bass in the lake are never caught which just seems like a lot to me. I feel like as anglers, when we go out there fishing, we believe that we catch a lot of the fish that are in the lake. But the reality is, is a huge population of legal sized bass are never caught on one of the most pressured bodies of water in America. So think about that. Now, with all that being said, looking at the data, my analysis is that medium and large sized bodies of water have a lot of places for bass to hide. And every year there's a large recruitment of new bass that are coming into the system, which helps to sustain future populations. But what about really small bodies of water? That is where I have to bring up study number four. This study was also done in Texas on Amon G. Carter Reservoir, a 1,500-acre lake outside of the Fort Worth, Dallas area. According to the biologists who conducted this study, this lake receives five times the amount of pressure from fishermen that Sam Rayburn receives when you take into account the number of hours fished per surface acre of lake. Now that is a lot of fishing pressure on a small body of water. Unfortunately, this study does not have as much information when it comes to the overall impact of anglers on the body of water. However, they did find that 43% of the bass in the lake over the course of a year were retained by tournament anglers. And at some point, they believe that if you were to reduce the number of tournaments on this lake by 50%, you would increase the number of bass over 18 inches by 9%. But every fishery is a little bit different. My home lake is considered a smaller body of water at 3,500 acres. It receives a tremendous amount of fishing pressure and the DNR does not stock any bass in it. But over the last 15 years of me fishing this lake, I can tell you that this lake has gotten way better when it comes to both the number of bass being caught and the overall size of the bass being caught. Now, speaking of studies, there was a recent study done on to 
Kalita Bend Reservoir that showed that anglers may not throw their bait at 41% of the bass population. So if you are struggling to catch bass, maybe it's because you are not in the right area. And in this video right here, I go over the finite details of this study to help you put more and bigger fish in the boat. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.